All right, so you were saying that you were having trouble um, identifying when something was a verb. And, uh, mm-hmm. um, using Duolingo, it's really hard to tell. Um, I totally agree. Um, so we're going to go over some of the, the basics. Um, and uh, a lot of what I've gotten here, I've gotten from places like Take Him, uh, Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm sure you remember that website. Yeah. Um, I should probably uh, include bibliography or something like that in my uh, description on my channel or something like that, which I'll get around to at some point. Uh, but uh, for now, I'm being half-assed about this. Uh, so there's three basic groups of verbs um, ichidan, godan, and irregular verbs um, ichidan are are what they're called in Japanese um, in English they're known as group one or ru verbs uh, they might be known as ru verbs to the Japanese as well uh, possibly more specifically to a younger audience um it's any verb, not any verb, but they're only verbs that end in ru. It's like saying a square is a rectangle, but not all rectangles are squares. Um, and then uh, godon verbs uh, are also known as group two verbs or u verbs. It's basically any verb that doesn't fit into one of the other two categories. Uh, and then the last main category is your irregular verbs or suru and kuru. Those are the uh, uh, to do and to come, as in to, to come here to this location. Um, and the main reason that they're considered irregular is that unlike every other verb, um, you'll sometimes see this uh, let me switch Oops. Uh, uh, Japanese font. You'll sometimes see this style of um, uh, I don't know what you call it exactly, but uh, notation mm-hmm. for for verbs uh, when they're in hiragana only, um, indicating that the first or two, maybe three uh, kana are part of the kanji of the of the of the word. And then anything after that is part of the conjugation of the verb. Um, for the irregulars, sudu and kudu, mm-hmm. this part actually can change during conjugation. Um and that's what makes them irregular. Uh, and then I made my own little separate little uh, one here. Uh, I call it semi-irregular. This is my own little thing, uh, just to remind myself. Um, iku, as in to go. Uh, when it conjugates in dictionary form into the past tense, uh, doesn't conjugate the way other... Uh, ku f- uh, form v- v- verbs do. And we'll get on to that later on, so don't worry too much about that for now. Uh, so I started talking about irregular first, so we'll get into those first. Um, for now, we're just going to talk about past negative and past negative. Um, the three main conjugating forms. Uh, we'll get into volitional and all that kind of stuff later on uh, when we're getting into the bigger stuff. Uh, you can do a lot of basic sentences with just these uh, four and arguably with the polite forms that we'll talk about later. Um, I mean, you know, exactly. You can talk about this kind of stuff, you know, as much as you want. Um so, kuru and sudu, um, when <laughs> they go into past tense, uh, the 
the consonant stays the same, but you're going to change it um, to the E form. What? Sorry. Uh, you you might have to back up the last like two minutes of what you were talking because my uh, about because my PC just crashed. Oh, I'm sorry. I did not see <laughs> your message about that. Uh, that's okay. Whoopsie doodle. That's all right. Nice timing. Very very nice timing. Yeah. All yeah. right. What was the last thing you heard? Um, you were. Hold on. Let me go back to my screen. Uh, you were talking about um, irregular verbs when they were when they are uh, written in hiragana. Okay. All right. So uh, what I did was I went like this mm -hmm. and put in the uh, the Japanese yeah. period there to indicate that uh, the first part of this is usually um, indicating that this is part of the kanji of the word. And then anything after that is part of the just the conjugation. Um, so for the irregulars, this part can actually change during conjugation, and that's what makes it irregular. Okay. Um, most, not most, the other verbs don't do that. Mm -hmm. uh, they will change what is here when they are altogether pronounced differently. As in when the kanji is read differently. Okay. So, like, uh, it's hard to say exactly what I mean, but uh, there are different ways to read the kanji for open. All right. Like, when you open a book... As opposed to open a restaurant. You might use the same kanji, but they are read differently. Does that make sense? So it's on the context? Yes. Uh, let me open up my... So, so you can look here uh, in my dictionary. Mm-hmm. Uh, down here in comments. Uh, akeru is to open a door. Mm-hmm. Um, or... But... Kaiho... Is to or open kaishin. or throw open as in the sense of liberalization. Uh, okay. So, kai is a different reading for, for, that kanji. for that kanji. And that is, and you determine that based on the on how it ends with the verb. Uh, d on how it's read with the verb. Or with, sorry, with the like with the the hiragana after it. Uh, in the case here, it's actually being combined with another kanji that you can see here. Oh yeah, I see that. Yeah. Um, or here, uh, da, 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 da. It, it can be, it can be weird. Uh, you know, someone in English could say "throw open the door." Yeah. As opposed to "open the door" or "swing open the door." So someone might say "akeru." As opposed to aku or hiraku. Hiraku is more for like open a book, while akeru is more for like open a door. Or, all right. Um, or, yeah. Uh, so we'll go with those to start with. Uh, so akeru is for open a door. And hiraku is for opening something smaller. It's it's hiraku. weird. Um, so, okay. but regard, but they're not irregular, e even though they w once they're they're kind of once they're read like that, they're they're locked like that. Once they're con, when you start conjugating them from hiraku or from akeru, they're gonna stay as. Ah, and they're going to stay as hira. 
they're not going to change from that while you conjugate the ku or the keru. That makes sense? Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's what makes the irregulars different, is that the su and the ku are actually going to change. So that's why I've got this little handy table here, is uh, to go through the basics. Um, the past negative and past negative forms are some easy ones that we can go through uh, for all the verbs. Mm -hmm. I've only got some basic examples. Um, when you're studying on your own, um, you'll want to just grab the verbs that you want to use on a more regular basis. And, uh, you know, maybe write out your own um, little charts of, you know, write down asobu, asobimashita, you know, go through all the different conjugations that you want to do and pra do little practice charts of each of the verbs that you want to do little conjugation charts for them. And uh, that can help you practice to remind yourself of how you conjugate a particular form or a particular uh, type of verb. Okay, so uh, kuru and suru both conjugate into the past tense the same way. Uh, the, and a, a lot of verbs, uh, not a lot of verbs. Um, uh, Oops. I, I sh I'm, I'm going to try not to use a hyperbole too much. Um, they both conjugate the same way. Uh, you're going to keep the consonant the same, and you're going to change the vowel... Uh, from u to i. So kuru and suru become kita and shita. It goes from, sorry, say that again, it goes from u to i? U to i. Okay. And then you drop the ru and it becomes ta. And if you would like, I can actually type that out in, in romaji. Of course, helps if I switch back. And of course, they don't have a, a sita, they only have a shita. So it has yeah. to be a shita. Um, and then the negative form, um, suru stay, stays with shi and drops the ru and goes for nai. Um, a lot of the verbs are just going to drop the ru and go with nai. It's, uh, if you hear nai, there's a good chance that the negative form of whatever they're talking about. Okay. That's the classic negative form of whatever they're talking about. Um, for kuru, it's going to be konai. Don't come. Shinai is don't do. And then when we go to the past negative, it's an interesting combination of the two. And I'm actually going to break that down uh, in Romaji for you. So what happens is, is that it's actually the negative form of the verb that's then getting conjugated into a past tense f form of it. So it's kona i, and the i gets dropped off, and kata gets put on the end of it. Oh, okay. And when we get to talking about... Um, Adjectives, Adjecti adjectives get um, uh, conjugated similarly because adjectives can be conjugated as well in Japanese. Just as a quick example, um, chisai. Is that right? Oh my god, my brain fart.
No, it's a double S. No double I. Oh my god. What is wrong with me today? Jeez, I. And when you... Chisakunai is not cute. So we in in adjectives, I'm not really talking to you about this now, but I'm just throwing it out there. It's just interesting. Kunai, so it's got the nai in there. And then the past tense is dropping the i in kata. So not small wasn't small. Hmm. So they do the same thing for adjectives. So that's just a breakdown there. So when you hear nakata, means wasn't whatever the verb is. Okay. And so that's uh, when you're doing like listening practice and stuff like that. That's just something you can keep your ear out for uh, at the end of sentences to try to catch. I sometimes find that when I'm trying to practice that kind of thing, that uh, working backwards is a little easier than trying to work from the beginning. Especially with the way that um, Japanese sentence structure is. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. And so, um, and that's the basics of those two verbs. Um they have some others that we'll get into uh, when we do other forms of conjugation, but that's basically it for now. Uh, kuru, kita, konai, konakata, tsuru, shita, shinai, shinakata. Um, and ichidan verbs is uh, probably the easiest one. This is the one that uh the only thing that will trick you here is the fact that not all ru verbs are ichidan verbs. But all ichidan verbs are ru verbs. But all well, but all ichidan verbs are ru verbs. So when you're looking at a verb and you see a ru at the end, there's a better than good chance that it's an ichidan verb, but not a hundred percent chance that it's an Ichidan verb. So, uh, and they're very easy to conjugate because you're going to just drop the Ru. Okay. And you're going to add stuff to the end of it. That's as easy. Nothing, there's nothing else you have to worry about. There's no specifics from verb to verb. It's drop Ru and add whatever you need to add. So I've given you two examples here, and that's all I will ever need to give you for Ichidan verbs, because they're all the goddamn same. So taberu and miru. Taberu is to eat, and miru is to look. Tabeta, mita. Drop the ru, add ta. Pretty simple. Tabenai, minai. Drop the ru, add nai. Can't eat, or don't eat. Uh, can't see, don't see. Um, it's not can't, it's don't, or didn't. What? Mm. Don't. See, when I say don't in English, it makes it sound like it's a command, but it's not a command either. It's nuanced, isn't it? Had not. But see, but it's not past tense yet. Because you got to remember, in Japanese, they don't have a present tense or a future yeah. tense. You're talking about present future. And it's just in context of whether you're talking about the present or the future. Um... So it could be, I'm not going to eat. It's probably the most likely. And me nigh is, I'm not going to look. Uh, tabe nakata, 
is didn't eat. Minakata is didn't look or didn't see. And so, again, same thing as above. Nakata, nakata. They conjugate into nai, and then they conjugate nai into nakata. Very simple. And they conjugate exactly the same, like I said in here, uh, as the irregulars, just without changing what the first consonant has going on. And, um, yeah, that's basically it for Ichidan verbs. Godon. Godon is where it gets, um, messy. And, Hold on. Yeah. I'm still working on your, um, Absolutely. Ichidan verb stuff. Uh, I'm going to look at your screen. Oh, my God. See, you're, you're writing so much more than I am. I need to have your screen captured is what really needs to happen. <laughs> Need to find a solution to be able to just capture your screen. Um, so when M and I were doing this uh, in OBS, there is a capture region uh, thing that you can do, mm -hmm. and so you can you, you can set Discord wherever you need to set Discord, yeah, and then just capture my screen, and then um, it'll. It'll do that. Yeah, that's true. I, c I could do that. Um, I, I can I can do that. I can crop it and all that. Um, I just didn't have it set up in time. Um, yeah. So maybe when we're done streaming, I'll set that up and uh, cut my camera in half and have yours at the bottom or something like that. Because I'm not writing as much as I thought I would be. You're doing a lot of explaining, whereas I'm sitting here listening and I can focus on writing. Not that I know if it's all that visible or... God, my handwriting looks awful. That's yeah, fine. All right, go down, verbs. And uh, I can share this with you too, so, but I know writing helps too. Mm hmm. Verbs ending in oof or any consonant plus oof that are not ru. Verbs in the above Ichidan group all are go down, aka everything else. And this is where I struggle. I struggle here. So much. These are the fuckers. The fuckers. Okay. These are the fuckers, because you uh, can already see here. These have sub rules. Yeah. To them. Um, it's, I think I'm just going to let's see. Uh, in in who or comes plus who. Conjugate based on whoop, the paired consonant. AKA the fuckers. Yep. All right. got some examples here. Um, mm -hmm. Ao is to meet. And okay. Then you have nomu, which is to drink. I know nomu. Mm -hmm. And hanasu, which is to talk, which is what we're doing right I now. I know, yeah, I know hanas. I've, I say, I was going to say, I've used hanase. Right? Hanase must yeah. Duolingo has used it in some of my lessons. Mm -hmm. So we're going to look at the past tense here. And you might notice almost immediately that each of these conjugates differently. Yeah. Ao becomes atta. And, becomes uh, atta? Atta. And now you may notice that it's not atsuta, it's atta. Yeah. Because it's a tiny tsu, which means it's a yeah, yeah. Because it was the it's the tiny tsu up it's, up in it, the other words. Yeah, it's a glottal stop. Yeah. 
Ugh, my A is awful. And then it almost uh... looks like a U. Getting that, like, Atta versus Atta is difficult. And one of the things I find useful to do is kind of, like, press your tongue up against the back of your front teeth. Yeah. When you're doing the glottal Atta. stuff. Atta. 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 I, fe Atta. I find that helps. Awanai. Awanai. The U turns into an A. Uh, negative form is actually easier than past tense form. Uh the consonant, the U become, um, becomes an A and stays mm -hmm. paired with whatever consonant it's paired with. But if the U is alone, it becomes wa instead. So ao becomes awa nai. And now we're at nai. So when we conjugate into past negative, you already know what to do. Because you're in nigh form. So you're at Awanakata. Nonda? Nonda. Nonda. Da. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you're dropping the whole vowel consonant combo there to put mm -hmm. an nda at the end of it. No, my. What the fuck? And uh, you can see in my little Godan rules there for past tense. Uh, mu, nu, and bu all become nda. Ugh. All right, I'm going to have to give me a sec. Or several. All right, so let me, let me take down these Godan rules. Since I'm not fighting an alphabet. I already use out. I probably should have put in the last uh, a coup, like kaku or something like that. I'm, I'll do it now. I've got it right in front of me. Probably the worst choice. Cocky. All according. Oh no! Wait. Never mind. <laughs> no, it becomes. That's K Kaku. That's K Kaku, because Kaku becomes Kaita, but then the negative form is Kakanai, which becomes mm. Kakanakakta. That this this language is dumb. <laughs> uh, made myself giggle.
Yeah, so that's the trick. When you run into uh, verbs that end in ru, but are godan rather than ichidan. Hanas. You okay? Sana. Yeah, just making sure I'm understanding the hiragana I'm reading. Which one are you on? Uh, hanase, or hanasu. Uh, a negative version. Hanasanai. Sanai, oh, that's what I thought. Yeah, All, the negative is always changing the vowel from u to a. Got it. The negative is is much easier than the past tense. And the for nomu, that's noma, right? Noma na. Noma na ka. Yeah. Yeah. Noma na ka. We'll ease you into looking at these with kanji later on. That's fine. That's, I mean, that's how Duolingo's been doing it. Jesus. Jesus isn't here to help you. Yeah, I know. I wish he was. I've just got the negative and the past negative of uh, Kaku to do. Kakanai. Mm hmm. And Kaka Nakata. Kaka 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 Kaka. I am immature. I noticed. But you encourage it. Not really. I doubt it. And there was one last uh, little uh, uh, notation here for this I wanted to point out. Uh, I mentioned it up here at the top where I put my little semi-regular iku. Uh, the past tense form of iku is not ita. It's ita. Rather than holding the e for a second beat, you glottal stop on the top. And it's also written like so, rather than with a double E, like that. It's just weird. So I just thought I'd point that out. When you're talking mm -hmm. about going somewhere in the past, you eat the. You don't eat the. So don't confuse that. Got it. Yeah. Which is weird because if you eat, you, you eat the as well. So don't confuse the two. Which, uh. When you say something, you EU. EU is kind of like when you're quoting somebody, like somebody said something. Mm hmm. Uh, uh, Tomu san wa butts, 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 butts. EU. <laughs> Itta. Uh. Anyway. Um, um, so, he didn't go to butts. He said butts. No. Oh. But that you would say, Ita. 
either way. Yeah. So yeah, negative tenths change the U to an A and just add an I. Very easy. If it's the U is alone, you add a Wa. Very easy. <sighs> uh, and then polite form is also pretty easy. Um, you're going to change uh for rue verbs, you're going to drop rue and add mus. For everything else, you're going to change the consonant. You're not going to you're not going to mess with the consonant. You're going to change the vowel to e and add mus. And then you're going to be polite with people. And they're going to be they're going to like it a lot and they're going to be polite back. Are they? Are they really? To your face, they'll still think you're a dirty gaijin behind your back. Well, of course. And they'll be very condescending and say things like, oh, you can use chopsticks. And you know, wow, your Japanese is very good. Your Japanese is very good when you said, Toire wa doko desu ka? <laughs> So, um, once you're conjugated into polite form, it's universal. Just like conjugating into nai form, you're good once you're conjugated into mas form. It's going to be the same. You can forget about needing to worry about what verb you're actually working on. Uh, once you're in tabe mas, ai mas, no mi mas, it's mashita, masen. Masen deshita. Mashita ends in ta, so it's past tense. Masen is negative. So if you hear masen, mm -hmm. that's the negative, that's the polite way of saying nai. And if you hear masen, and just like above, with the non-polite form, you conjugate from negative to past negative. So you go masen, and then you add deshita. Which I'm pretty sure is desu deshita. I'm pretty sure they're just conjugating desu into deshita. But I could be wrong there. I don't know the actual uh, lineage of the linguistics, even though I'm curious about that kind of thing. Uh, once you're in polite form, there's a few other things you can do from here, uh, but there are other things that you ha kind of have to go back to... Uh, um, dictionary form for. Um, I know one of the big ones I'm going to talk about in a second. Uh, we're hitting 40 minutes here, so that worked out pretty well. Um, I'll talk about it briefly in a second. Um, I'm just going to briefly look at something. But uh, yeah, uh, you you know when you conjugate into polite form, you start to lose what you can conjugate out in, into from there. Um, but you can still conjugate uh, into quite a few things. So, um, but they're gonna all kind of conjugate uniformly at that point because they're gonna you they're conjugating out of su. which we'll work on at some point. Um, one last thing to talk about um, is English exceptions, um, which we, I think we talked about a little bit at one point, um, how like and want are verbs in English, but they're not in Japanese. Yeah. Which is a 
it's a hard thing to wrap your mind around. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think the best way to think about it is to think about them that think about less that the words don't exist in Japanese. They just don't. What you're talking about when you're talking about sukina, skina, and hoshi are thing that is likable and thing that is wanted. They're adjectives that are describing something in a particular way. And um, we can also then talk about next time about making those things about conjugating with those verbs. We briefly talked about it above with uh, chisai. Um, yeah. And uh, there are two groups of adjectives. Just like there are with verbs. So we're going to have some fun with that and I'll work on a study plan for that as well. Okay. Um, and, but one last thing. Suzuku. <laughs> uh, you actually learned... Uh, one other way to conjugate while we were studying there. Uh, the te form. Anytime that you conjugated something into the ta form, uh, not in the polite form, but in the dictionary te- past tense, you were also being able to conjugate into the te form because they conjugate exactly the same. You just swap out te instead of ta. So, atta instead would be atte nonda would be nonde hanashita would be hanashite uh, tabeta would be tabete mite instead of mita and we can talk about that next time about how the hell you use the te form because it's a uh, interesting and it's one of those few forms that is constantly referred to as the te form rather than being referred to as something like the polite form instead of mas form because mm. it is a multifunctioning conjugation it is um useful and confusing so uh that's almost 45 minutes. Why don't we give it a call there then? Okay. Do you think that helped? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. That was that was kind of like the the one big thing that I was sort of missing uh, in a lot of these sentences that they're giving me. Um, it, like, let's see if I have, let me, let me load one up real quick, see if it'll give it to me. Yeah, yeah. We, we could have some um, question and answer time too. Let's see, not Hirakana. Intro. Loading. Actually, looks like I could probably look at the lesson rather than. Yeah, let's look at the lesson instead. <sighs> um, let's see. That's. Um, Oh, okay. So, um, so one of the sentences that they that they gave um, is "ego ga hanasemas." Okay, um, so we didn't go over that really, but uh, if it's got an "e" in there, um, we can actually go over that right now if you like. Uh, the "hanase," the mm-hmm. "se" form, or that is the uh, potential form. It's the uh, can do. Oh, okay. So that's but like uh, I can speak Japanese. Yeah, but so like they they never they never explained what that is. Oh, okay. Uh, the 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 lesson that they're trying to teach with that sentence is that the is that ga is similar to wa. Um, just oh. remember that you use ga in statements and wa in questions to their teaching. Like, Sorry, ego what? ga. It says, um, it says we'll learn more along the way about ga, or ga versus wa. For now, when talking about what languages you speak, just remember that you usually use ga in statements and wa in questions. 
examples, ego ga hanasemas and ego wa hanasemas ka. Okay. Again, it's all rote memorization for the most part. Yeah, um, which there's a lot of discussion. I mean, if this is, you have a teaching degree, so, I mean, this is yeah. something that, you know. <laughs> I'm out of practice, but yeah. No, but, but in the theory of teaching, of how much oh. is rote memorization versus learning the actual mechanics of any particular skill which is more useful and how much is learning both actually useful together yeah i i think i think in terms of this um i'm i'm seeing i'm seeing progress um in my i'll just say in my skill of speaking or reading japanese mm -hmm. As in, I am able to read, I'm able to look at a chunk of a sentence and go, okay, this is, you know, do you speak English? Right. And, and, that's, and that's fine. If, if I want to be able to look at something or if I want to be able to, to say something, like if, if, if I'm in Japan and I ask someone if they, if, if I ask a Japanese person if they can speak English, or, if, sorry, not if they can speak English, but if they speak English, then it's better for me to know that, it's better for me to know through just ha repeated hammerings of what that statement is, mm -hmm. than it is to know, well, this is this way, that, like, I, I have to use these 10 building blocks to make this sentence so I can ask this person if they can speak my language instead. Right. Um, and I mean, it, I think it's, um, it, it's that, like, it's that cheat sheet that you buy in the bookstore that goes in yeah. a binder that is like, yeah. here's the ten phrases you need to survive your first day in Japan. And it's yeah, it's like, where's the bathroom, Yeah, you know, how much is this, you know, I would like this food. And that'll so. only get you so far. Mm -hmm. But and, there's a certain, and there's the debate, I think the debate for a lot of people is more of um, how granular do you need to get before it's too granular. Mm -hmm. Now, now they, they have, one of the things that they've been doing slowly over all of these lessons is they'll introduce numbers occasionally. Mm -hmm. um, I have finally gotten up to time lesson two. And in time lesson two, in the first three uh, exercises that they gave me, mm -hmm. they started introducing kanji for numbers you that so I had much known. more experience than XP than me. How are you only on time two? Because uh, I went back and I have been capping out the hiragana levels. Why? And I, I just uh, it, just for the gamification of it. Um, so I wanted to see what was at the end of the leagues that they put you in. Oh, and you found there was nothing. There's basically nothing. Yeah. Um, because there's no promotion zone beyond it. It's just uh, 45 people that'll stick around and then five people that'll get demoted back into the, uh, the previous league. Right, yeah. Um, so what I was doing is, I, like, two two weeks ago, I had kind of found myself hovering about the like right around the promotion zone so i just started hammering out those old hiragana levels mm -hmm. and they and, and i was noticing they were adding in things i didn't immediately know like um like hoshi amai ski i mean i knew ski um keith and i uh but throwing those words in and not really explaining them um which is where my confusion came in when they were talking about yoru and yomu like, I recognized, based on the word that they were giving me, that yoru was a verb. Right. But yomu didn't make sense to me because it was a, it was night. But, like, I know that good night is, you know, sayonara or... Actually, what is... The, I don't actually know the more common one now. Uh, well, when you say good night, it's usually oyasumi nasai. Sorry. Um, uh, goodbye. 
That's what I meant. Oh, okay. Um, also, my my mouth refuses to say Oyasumi Nasai. Um, Your mouth there, refuses to say? Well, it always tongue ties me on the uh, Oyasumi, the Nasai. Oh, okay. I would, I would always get tongue tied up while trying to say the whole thing. So thankfully, if I wanted to say goodnight to, um, to my phone, uh, I could just get away with saying Oyasumi. Like, here, let's see if this will, if you'll hear this. Oyasumi. Oyasumi nasai. I heard it. And then it starts playing my, my routine. Ah, no. Do you know why uh, Discord is showing me a blank, a black screen? For this? Yeah. I'm, I don't trying, know. I'm trying to put it in. My camera's active. Yeah, well, no, I mean, that's just Discord, period. Oh. Like, that's all of um, Discord. I haven't even uh, it, cropped it. Discord has a uh, streaming mode. Yeah, I disabled it. Oh, then I have no idea. Um, That's weird. Maybe I need to remove it and re-add it or something. Window capture. Discord. Add new source. In a completely, well, in a slightly related, because it pertains to language, um, I guess the Supreme Court... Um, did not include um, did not include internet or social media in a ruling that they made on uh, that's a word I don't understand um, um, I think we're gonna end, end the stream too by the way yeah. Okay. yeah yeah